What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to Tech Conversations. I'm your host Guillermo. It is June 14th. Hope you're all having a great day today. Another green day in the market. I'm actually up about $500. I don't know why it's saying $36. As you can see over the weekend, we were at uh, 107, 130. Now we're at 107, 600. So up about $500 today. But we'll see what the rest of the day brings us. Now in today's video, I want to start a new series. I kind of started it last week where I kind of talk about what the best strategies are to use for a certain scenario. So today, some of the cheapest strategies that can give you the highest returns. Last week, I made top three beginner strategies. I'll make top three bullish strategies in the future or top three highest probability strategies, things like that. And so before I get into that, all I ask is that you guys hit the like button down below and subscribe, guys. It really helps out the channel. Now, one quick thing I want to mention before I begin if you don't know how to close out of these trades, please don't enter them. I have a made, I've made a video where I talk about how to close out of any trade. I'll put a link to that in the description below, but please don't enter a trade before you know how to close it. I had someone message me about this last week, so please make sure you know how to close the trade before you enter it. Again, link to that in the uh, description below. So let's get into the first option here. So with this one, our goal is to profit from neutral stock price action with limited risk. And so ultimately the ideal stocks here will be stocks that have low volatility. You wanna find a stock that trades sideways, kind of stays within a defined range. And so one stock that I wanna use here, and again, this is just an example, so please don't copy this trade, but I wanna use Texas Instruments just to demonstrate this. So let's say I think Texas Instruments is just gonna trade sideways here for the next week or so. This could potentially be a good stock for this strategy. So now that I've found the stock, I'm gonna go over to the options here for Texas Instruments. And here's how we set up this first strategy. So first, of course, you wanna uh, choose an expiration date. Now, since we want this stock to trade sideways, I think it's best to choose the closest expiration date to us uh, because the longer out you go, the more things that can happen between now and then that could cause the stock to you know, drastically move in price. So I'm just gonna leave it as June 18th. Again, I want this stock to, for the most part, trade sideways here until June 18th. So now that I've determined the expiration date, now what I wanna do is I wanna determine what price this stock will be at on the expiration date. So what price do I think Texas Instruments will be at on June 18th? So let's say I think uh, on June 18th, uh, this stock will be at around $187.50. So then what we wanna do is we wanna find the strike price, uh, strike price that's as close to that price as possible. And what we're gonna do so we're gonna go over to sell here. So we're first gonna sell some options. We're actually gonna sell a call and we're gonna sell a put at that strike. So again, I think that this will be at around 187.50 on the expiration date of June 18th. I'm gonna go ahead and sell a call and sell a put at that strike price. So here's the 187.50, I'm gonna sell a call. Remember when you sell an option, you receive a premium. I'm gonna receive about $2.58 per share or $258 for the contract here for selling this call. And then I'm gonna switch over to puts here. I'm also gonna sell a put at that same strike, 187.50. So again, I'm gonna receive 135 per share. Each contract is 100 shares. I'm gonna get $135 for selling this put. Now, what we need to do is we wanna switch over to buy here. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna buy a put and I'm gonna buy a call. So since we're on puts here, let's start with buying a put. So for the put that I'm buying, I'm gonna go back to uh, the strike we chose for the options we sold. And I'm gonna go one strike below it here uh, to the 185 strike, and I'm gonna go ahead and buy this put. So now that I'm buying, I'm gonna have to pay a premium. I'm gonna have to pay 65 cents per share, or remember it's 100 shares in each contract, so I have to pay $65 to buy this put option. Now I need to buy a call. And I'm gonna go back to buy a call, and now I'm gonna have to buy a call above the strike of the options that I sold. Now here's something that's very important. These three strikes need to be equidistant from each other, okay? Uh, so what do I mean by that? What I mean is that uh, since, as you, as you see over here, we bought the 185 put, and then we're selling the 187.50 strike, that's 250 away from each other. The strikes are 250 away from each other. 
So now whatever uh, call I buy up here needs to also be 250 away from the options that I sold, meaning I have to buy this 190 strike call here. Sometimes people get that confused and then their chart ends up looking all weird. Uh, so make sure that they're equidistant from each other. The strikes are equidistant from each other. And so now that we've done that here, we finally have this set up. As you can see, we're gonna receive a credit here. So we're gonna get paid to enter this trade. We're gonna get about $200. Now you will have to put up collateral, of course. Uh, we continue here. Uh, you'll have to put up $250 in collateral, but you're receiving $200. Uh, what does that mean then? So if we take a look down here at the profit and loss chart, that means our max loss is 50, max profit $200. So you're risking $50 to make $200. And so our max loss here is limited. It's going to be uh, the collateral that we put up minus the credit received. So 250 is the collateral minus credit $250. That's what we have here. Max profit will be the credit that we receive minus any commissions you may have to pay. And I'll talk about commissions at the end of the video. So ultimately, this is called the short iron butterfly. Again, we've talked about this before, but again, this video is to talk about some of the cheapest strategies that can give you some of the highest returns in the market. So now that we've seen how to set up the iron butterfly, let's quickly go ahead and take a look here at the options profit calculator. Again, it's nice to visually see what this trade looks like. So we'll go to custom and we'll go to three legs here. So let's see what our profit losses are depending on the date and the price of this stock. Uh, so, I'm, uh, so I'll click in symbol here. And again, we use Texas Instruments, which again is ticker symbol uh, TXN here. So we'll go ahead and click on get the price here. Uh, so we'll get the price for this. And then of course, we'll set it up here. Uh, so it's getting the price. So there we go. So now let's go ahead and um, we're going to go ahead. Actually, we need four here, four legs since we're selling a put and selling a call. Uh, let's go TXN here. Uh, and so we'll set this trade up. So let's go ahead. Let's buy our uh, highest strike, which was the call. So same expiration for all these contracts. June 18th calls are on the left, puts are on the right. So remember, we bought our call at the 190 strike, which is right here. And then we're going to go ahead and write or sell our call. And that was at the 187.50 strike, which is right here. And then let's go ahead and sell or write our uh, put. So again, same expiration, 187.50. This is a put that's on the right here. And then finally, let's go ahead and buy our put, which just has the lowest strike, same expiration. This was the 185 strike. So again, all of these equidistant from each other, these three strikes equidistant from each other. And then we can go ahead and say something like 182 to 192 here for the range. Let's just quickly take a look at what this looks like. Uh, so again, entry, co entry cost here is a credit. We're receiving a credit to enter this trade, $204. Uh, we're putting up $50 in collateral. So our max risk is only $46. Our max return is 204, which again is the credit we received. Uh, we get our break even points. And then this tells us probability of profit around 36%, which is not bad considering, you know, we're not risking as much as we can potentially make here. So as you can see, this is what this looks like. Um, and as you can see, if we do make, uh, you know, the $204, it's going to be a pretty big return. Just making $187 is already 400% return here. Uh, and so ultimately on the expiration date, you want this stock to be at exactly the strike of the options you sold, 187.50. Now the probability of that is very, very unlikely. Uh, but as long again, as you're very near that, you're still going to make a really uh, nice profit, nice return here. As you can see here, the further away you get on both sides, the less you start to make, and then eventually you start to lose money. Um, and so ultimately what you don't want to happen on expiration date is for this stock to, uh, hit the lowest strike or the highest strike and then go above the highest strike or below the lowest strike. So you want it to stay in between these strikes. And again, the best case scenario is that it lands exactly on this price on the expiration date. So anyways, this is the short iron butterfly. That's how you set it up. Again, not too expensive, $46 here to potentially make $204, which would be a really big return. So now let's go into the next strategy here. So let's go back here. Now the next strategy, uh, our goal here will also be to profit from neutral stock price action. And again, with limited risk, 
Uh, so again, we're anticipating here minimal movement with some sort of stock here. So again, you want to use stocks that have low volatility, they're trading sideways, and that are staying between kind of a defined range. So you first want to find a stock. Uh, so let's say, for example, uh, I want to use, for example, KO, right? Coca-Cola. And again, this is just an example. Please don't copy this exact same trade. Uh, so let's say I want to use Coca-Cola because it's a slow mover. It doesn't really move much. So what I can do is I can go over to trade Coca-Cola options here. Uh, now, one thing to keep in mind here, guys, is if if the stock has dividends, anytime you're selling an options, there is risk of early assignment, uh, especially if you're selling options that expire on the week that the X dividend date lies on. And I'll talk more about this at the end of the video, but always check the X dividend date. If you're selling options on the week that that X dividend date lies on, I would certainly not sell options or close out two days prior to the X dividend date. So always be checking that here. And again, I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. But here we are on Coca-Cola now. So if this strategy, again, we want to pick an expiration date. And again, since our goal here is for the stock to trade sideways, I don't want to go too far out because then there's a higher chance of something happening between today and then that could cause the stock to move drastically. So I'm just going to stick with the uh, sh shortest uh, expiration date. So June 18th will be fine here. And so now what I want to do is I want to determine what price range this stock will be between by on the expiration date. So I don't want one single price now. Now I kind of want a range. And so let's say with Coca-Cola on June 18th here, I believe it will be trading between 54.50 and 54. Okay, let's say I think it's gonna be between that price range. So then what I can do, so I'm gonna go over to sell again. We're gonna sell some options here. So I think it's gonna be between it's gonna be between 54 and 54.50. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sell a call at both of those uh, price ranges. So at the top of the range, which is 54.50, I'll sell a call. And at the bottom of that range, which is 54 strike, I'm gonna sell a call as well. So we're selling two calls. We're gonna receive some nice premium here, $93 for this one, $139 for this one. Now I'm gonna go over to buy. So now I'm gonna buy two call options as well. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first go uh, under this uh, 54 strike call that I sold, and I'm gonna buy a call here. Now again, just like with the short iron butterfly, the distance between this one that I bought and the closest one that I sold needs to be the same as the highest one I sold and then the other one that I'm gonna buy here. So I'm gonna buy a call and it's gonna be above the strikes that I sold. And again, it has to be equidistant. So the, the distance between this one and this one needs to be the same as the distance between this one and this one. So the strike distance here is 0.5. The strike distance here should also be 0.5, right? Which means I couldn't go ahead and buy this one or else it's gonna look very weird. Uh, so again, make sure it's always equidistant from each other. As you can see, now it looks symmetrical and it looks like it should look like. Uh, and so now that we have that here, uh, let's take a look at what we see. So the cost for this one's gonna be $9. So unlike the short iron butterfly where we received a credit, this is gonna be a debit. So we have to pay here to enter this trade and I have to pay about $9 to enter this trade. And so what's nice about this is that our max loss is gonna be the debit paid to enter. So the most I can lose here is $9 my max profit will be the high the difference between the highest strike and the second highest strike so 55 minus 450 is one minus the debit paid to enter or that's 0.5 sorry 0.5 times 100 is 50 minus the debit paid to enter is not uh nine so 50 minus nine is 41 dollars that's going to be my max profit that's how you can figure out quickly uh what your max profit and max loss is uh, so that's kind of nice. So this is called the long condor spread with calls here. So I'm risking $9 here to potentially make $41. So more than, you know, quadrupling your uh, money here, potentially, if everything works out correctly here. And so again, let's take a look at what this will look like. Let's go over to the pro options profit calculator. Um, and I'll just, ref uh, so yeah, we'll just go and click on four legs again here so this can clear out. And so again, we're gonna do this with KO. Again, make sure you're checking for X dividend dates. Try to avoid those. 
uh, to be uh, to avoid being early assigned. And so let's go ahead and start with the lowest strike. So again, this involves calls, which is on the left. These all have the same expiration, June 18th. So we'll just leave it as that. And so the lowest strike was 5350, which is right there. Then we'll go ahead and sell or write our 54 strike, which is right here, call. And then we're gonna sell or write 5450 uh, call, uh, which is gonna be right here. And then finally we bought uh, the 55 strike call, which is the highest strike, which is right here. For stock price range, I will go ahead and do, uh, let's do 52 to 57. And then let's go ahead and calculate this. So let's take a quick look at what this looks like here. So this is what it looks like. Uh, so this one's telling me I'm paying $11, which is a debit. Uh, again, we're paying to enter this trade, which is also our max risk. Max return, $39. and also gives us some break evens, telling me about a 30% probability of profit here, uh, which again is not huge. Uh, but take that with a grain of salt. And again, you know, we aren't risking a whole lot for what we can potentially make. But here's what it looks like. Uh, and so again, if we do make $39, it's about a 355% return here. Uh, and keep in mind, remember, you don't have to wait until the expiration date. You can close out before the expiration date and just collect partial profit. You know, if on June 17th, you wanted to close for a $20 profit, you can certainly do so. It's 182% return, by the way. And so ultimately here on the expiration date, you want the, the stock to be trading between the strikes of the calls that you sold. So on the expiration date, I want it to be between 54 and 54.50. If it is between 54 and 54.50, that's where I'm gonna make my max potential profit, which is $39. As you go up, you start to make less and less, same thing going down. Ultimately, what you don't want to happen on the expiration date uh, is for you to uh, be, uh, you know, outside of this 54.50 or um, or outside of the 55, which is the hi uh, highest strike, and then under the lowest strike, 53.50, uh, or else that's where you're going to lose your max loss here, which is $11. So again, ultimately, the goal is to make sure that the stock is between the strikes of the calls that you sold here on the expiration date. So again, that's the long call condor spread. Uh, and so now let's go on to the last strategy here that I want to talk about. And so again, very similar as the first two with this third strategy, our goal will be to profit from neutral strike uh, stock price action with limited risk. Uh, and so the stock uh, shouldn't move much here with this uh, strategy here. And so we want to again, find stocks that we don't think will move much stocks with low volatility. Again, make sure you're checking dividends because we will be selling some options here. So let's say for this strategy, I want to use, for example, AT&T, right? AT&T, uh, you know, let's say I don't think this moves much. It's kind of a slow mover. Maybe I think this is great for this strategy. So let's say I want to use this. And again, this is just an example, but let's go over the options and see how we would set this third strategy up here. So now that we found the stock, uh, we need to pick an expiration date. And this is actually gonna involve two different expiration dates. So first, what you wanna do is you wanna go out about two months. Now, that would be uh, August. Uh, this doesn't have any August options. So I'll just go to July 30th and it'll still get the point across here. So I'm gonna go to July 30th. What I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna kind of determine what price AT&T will be at in the next, let's say two weeks or so. So let's say the next two weeks, I think AT&T will be around $30. So now that I've gone out about two months, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna buy a call option at or closest to that strike price that I can find. Uh, so, uh, or closest to the share price that we think it's gonna be at. So again, let's say we think it's gonna be around 30 in the next two, three weeks. So I would go ahead and I'd buy a call here at the $30 strike. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna go to let's say June 25th, for example, here. Uh, so usually I go two weeks out for this one and I'll explain in a separate video why. Uh, so I'm gonna go two weeks out now. Now what I'm gonna do, since we bought a call, now that we've bought a call, what we can do is we can sell a call against that. And we're gonna sell a call with the same strike as the call that we just bought. So we bought a call at the 30 strike, 
Now we're going to sell a call at that same strike, which is $30. So I would go ahead and I would click on this. I'm going to have to, I'm going to receive $7 for selling this. I got to pay $32 for this. So ultimately my cost is going to be $25 here. Now, as you can see, uh, Robinhood actually recognizes this one. This is the long call calendar spread. Very powerful, very popular strategy here. Uh, so now that we've done that, let's just quickly take a look at our max loss. So our max loss here, of course, will be uh, the amount that you're paying to enter this trade, right? So the debit paid to enter. Now your max profit is kind of impossible to know for sure uh, due to the fact that you're choosing different expiration dates and there's things like implied volatility that can change the prices of the options, things like that. So it's impossible to really determine what your max profit will be, uh, but this can kind of you know give you an estimate of what it will be. Uh, but I will show you guys where your max profit happens here. And so again, this is the long call calendar spread. Uh, let's take a look here at what this would look like on the options profit calculator. Now, as you can see, they actually have the calendar spread under spreads here. So we can go to that here and let's quickly take a look at what this would look like. So this is going to be ticker symbol T, AT&T, $29 here. So again, we bought uh, a call here. Uh, so we went two months out. But they don't have August. So we just chose July 30th. And then we bought the 30 strikes since that's where we think the stock will be at in the next two, three weeks. Uh, so we'll go ahead and buy that one. And then we wrote or we sold our call here. This one we went to June 25th and I did the 30 strike because it needs to have the same strike as the call you bought. And then this is a call. So right there. And then let's go ahead and do price range from 28 to let's say $32. And let's calculate this. Let's just quickly take a look at what this looks like. So here's what this would look like. Again, this is the call calendar spread. Entry cost $26. This is a debit. So you're paying $26 to enter this trade. That's also your max risk. Your max return is $34. So you're risking $26 here to make $34, which is not a horrible risk. Probability of profit is also pretty high here, almost 50%. Uh, but again, take this with a grain of salt. Don't just base your decision off of this. Uh, but if we take a look at this, ultimately on the expiration date of the short call, the call that we're selling, June 25th, right? Uh, we have a pretty wide range where we can profit. As long as we're between $29.20 and almost $31, we're going to make some money here. And these are pretty big returns. Uh, I mean, if you're in the middle here, you know, over 100% returns. And again, like I mentioned before, you don't have to wait until expiration to take profits. You can take profits before. If on June 20th, you wanted to, you know, sell or June 21st or June 22nd, right? You want to sell for a $17 profit, $18 profit, go ahead and do so. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to wait until the expiration to take profit here. Uh, but you will have to wait till expiration to get your max profit, right? Which is $34. Now this is going to happen on the expiration if the stock is at $30 a share. Where is that coming from? That's the strike price we chose. So ultimately here, what you want to happen is that on the expiration date of the call that you're selling, you want the stock to be at that strike, $30, or as close to it as possible. The farther away it gets, the less you're going to make and eventually you'll start to lose money here. Now, one last thing here, once your short call expires, right, you're still gonna be left with the long call because this doesn't expire until July 30th. So you have three different things you can do here. You can either A, sell another call for the next week against this call you bought, B, close out of the entire position. So you'd close out of the call you sold, you'd close out of the call you bought, or C, you could just leave the call you bought on its own. If you think you're bullish on this stock in the next couple of weeks and you think the stock's going to go up and you're going to benefit from just the call you bought, you can certainly leave that open. Most people just close out of the entire trade at that point. So anyways, this is the call calendar spread. Now, a couple of things to note. Like I mentioned, risk of early assignment, right? We're selling options with all of these strategies. And so you should always take a look at the dividend and the ex-dividend date of the stock. If the ex-dividend ex date lies on the, the week that your calls expire, your options expire that you're selling, I would either A, again, avoid selling options that week, or B, you need to close out two days prior to the ex-dividend date to avoid, avoid being early assigned. 
The other thing to note, commission costs, we are opening and closing four contracts for some of these. That could be some pretty big commissions, depending on what broker you're on. On Robinhood, there aren't any commission fees, so we don't have to worry about that. But other brokers do have commissions. So always take note of that and be aware of that uh, when entering these trades. So anyways, those are three strategies, very cheap with some pretty big returns. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Check out the Discord, link to it in the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Well, let me know what you guys think, and I will see you guys next time.